In today's video we're gonna be creating a ready to use asset so you'll be able to use it over and over again and actually this is a recreation of something that I found on Pinterest and I thought it'd be cool to actually take the picture and turn it into an animation. By the way guys this is the last 48 hours before the summer sale with 40% off is ending so go to the link in the description and take advantage of that gigantic promo and that being said we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. Alright so we're back in software let me just show you the comp settings 1080 by 1920 and what I'm gonna do first is create a line so make sure to grab the pen tool create a point here hold shift and create another one over here. All right, this is pretty much perfect. We can actually duplicate this. I'm gonna hit Control D for the shape one. So we got two of them in one layer. I'm gonna select that point over here and I'm gonna drag it somewhere here. We can actually extend this one as well. And what I'm gonna do next is hit G and I'm gonna start creating another point. Okay, maybe something like that. So it's nicely sticking out and then we're just gonna create a line chart. Okay, we might delete that point over here. Yeah, this might be better. Okay, make sure it's in the middle. And actually, I don't really like that it's so harsh over here. So we're just gonna fix it a bit. And then we're gonna create another line. So make sure this layer is selected. I'm gonna create a point here. And actually, you know what? This is gonna start from here. Then what we're gonna do is hold shift, click here, and let's just try to align it. All right, this should be perfect. And let's rename the layer. To lines all right so that's what we have doesn't look that spectacular but we're gonna fix it later on so what i'm gonna do next is basically grab the ellipse tool and we just want to create a circle i'm gonna recenter and what i'm gonna do with this let's rename it to circle and what i'm gonna do with this is basically change the stroke with a bit just like so and then we're gonna duplicate the ellipse i'm gonna turn on the fill and i'm gonna take the color from the stroke okay i'm gonna change the size a bit just like so. Actually, this is looking pretty cool. I'm gonna make sure ellipse one is selected and I'm gonna change the opacity in the properties panel. Okay, something like that should do. All right, since we got our circle, we can disable this and we're gonna take care of the lines again. So what I'm gonna do is open it up, go to contents and we're gonna click on the shape tool and I'm gonna add trim paths to this. So here we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna keyframe end, move it forward and I'm gonna change it to 0%. All right, so this is gonna nicely reveal. And then we need pretty much the same thing for the shape three. So we can actually copy this. I'm gonna copy trim paths. I'm gonna select shape three, go to the beginning and paste. All right, so this is looking really nice. And what we need to do is basically head over to our shape three over here. I'm gonna go to stroke and I'm gonna click on the plus right next to the dashes. And what you want to do is actually adjust it a bit. So I'm going to probably go to the stroke width. I'm going to decrease it. I'm going to click on the plus again and I'm going to change the gap. All right, something like that should do. So that's what we have so far. It's extremely slow. We can speed it up a bit and make sure that the time indicator is behind the keyframes. And what we're going to do is open it up again. I'm going to close shape three and I'm going to go to the path one in our shape two. We can close down the train paths and now make sure to click on the path over here. I'm going to hit control C and then I'm going to enable the circle. I'm going to hit P and I'm going to click on the position. Now let's hit control V and that way this is going to follow our path over here. All right, something went wrong. So what we need to do is select all that and we're just going to drag it lower. So basically it needs to be perfectly aligned. So now what I'm going to do is make sure this starts from the beginning and I'm going to extend it all the way to the keyframes over here. Okay, let's hit you, you again. And what I'm going to do is apply intro graph. So basically everything is going to have that peak on the left. All right, so this is really cool already. And also make sure to go to shape three and we're just going to adjust it a bit so it's aligned with our circle. All right, this is perfect. And the next thing we need to do is basically add drop shadow to the circle. So that way it's going to be separated a bit better. Then I'm going to probably set the distance to nine. I'm going to copy the drop shadow and I'm going to paste it to the lines. All right, this should be perfect. Now what I'm going to do is create a new new object. Let's call it controller. And I'm going to select these two and we're going to parent it to our controller. So here I'm thinking about scaling it down a bit and adjusting the position. And then what I'm going to do is head over here to the run rectangle tool and we're just going to create the background for this. Let's recenter and drop it below. All right, so that's how it's looking. And obviously we're going to turn off the stroke and we're going to change the color for our background. All right, this is pretty cool. I'm going to probably apply the CC light sweep effect. And here we want to change the shape to smooth and we're going to increase the width. I'm going to change the edge thickness to two and I'm going to change the color to something blue. Ooh, 
Actually, purple looks pretty cool. So let's try kind of purple. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to rename that layer to BGS for the background. And the next thing we need is basically hit G. And I'm going to create a point over here. Then I'm going to hold shift, create another one here. And we're going to turn on the stroke. I'm going to turn off the fill. And here I'm going to set the stroke width to 4. Or even more, maybe like 3. So now what I want to do is basically rename it to background lines and I'm gonna go to add repeater and I'm gonna open it up here we want to set it to like 17 maybe and I'm gonna open up transform repeater and we're just gonna adjust the position the X position all right something like that should do all right so this seems pretty good I'm gonna probably play around with the end opacity or maybe the start opacity I'm gonna set it to zero and then what we need to do is drag the background lines right below the lines all right, so this is looking pretty cool. I'm going to probably adjust the position for this a bit. All right, this looks good. I'm going to go to the opacity and I'm going to set it to 50%. Also, I'm going to choose a different color for this. Let's find something that's looking good here. Let's hit OK. And then as for our circle, I'm going to probably use deep glow over here. Okay, this is looking absolutely fire. Then the lines, I'm going to apply CC light sweep effect. Let's find our center. Where is it? It's over here. So we're going to drag that point to the middle and this is giving us a very nice touch over here. So what I'm going to do is probably bump up the width so it's hitting more of the lines. And let's see now. All right, this is looking absolutely amazing. I'm just thinking about taking that line over here, which is probably the first one, and dragging that point right where the circle is. All right, so this is pretty cool. I'm going to go to the modes and I'm going to select everything here which are the three layers in the middle, and I'm going to change the track map to BG. Let's enable the layer again, and we're going to set keyframes for opacity. I'm going to go back and change it to zero. All right, with that nice fade in effect, it's looking absolutely amazing. All right, I think we're ready to actually add some adjustment layers. So for this, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to rename it to Lumetri Color. Here, I'm thinking about playing around with the blues a bit. So I'm going to go to the color wheels and I'm going to drag the shadows towards the blues. Bro, this is looking so good. Let's decrease the shadows a bit. We can also play around with the highlights and mid tones. And also, by the way, for the lines, I'm going to go to number one. And here we want to change the line cap to round. So that way it's going to look smoother over here. All right, next thing we need in the Lumetri color is probably going to curves. And I'm going to create a subtle S curve. You don't want to go overboard here. All right, then we're going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to call it noise. I'm going to add the effect and I'm going to set amount to probably 10. Let's uncheck use color noise and this is going to give us a very nice look. Then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer again and let's rename it to posterize time. Yes, posterize time again. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to set it to 16, just like so. Then we need another thing, which is going to be vignette. I'm going to probably change the track mode over here to the background. And what we want to do is basically make it darker in certain parts. So depending where you're going to use it, I feel like it's looking absolutely amazing on the black background. But if you take it and use it on the white background, it's not going to be that great. Let's just see. You see when it's extremely dark on the corners, it's not looking good. So depending if you're using it on the black background or if you're talking and you got a black t-shirt like me, then it's going to be good here. But otherwise, I wouldn't go for such a harsh vignette. So I was thinking maybe about putting it right here to the side. So it's lighting up wherever the circle is. Ooh, with the posterized time is looking good. So I would say vignette is optional. All right, also let's go ahead and turn on the motion blur. All right, so this is looking absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna turn off the vignette for now and I will show you how it looks on the reel. All right, so just check it out. Oh, bro, this is such a good animation for reels. And then you can always add the text over here depending on what you're talking about in the video. Bro, this animation is so good. Then you can always turn it into 3D and make it like that. Let's just add some movement over here. Whoa. Let's add the graph. And you can create crazy 3D animations with this. All you need to do is just drop it on the timeline, turn it into 3D and that's it. So you can always just, I don't know, start with creating a background. Let me just show you. I'm gonna change it to radial ramp, swap colors, and let's choose something different here. Bro, this is looking so good. Imagine adding some objects in the background. This would be perfect. So in order to save it, all you need to do is just delete everything from the project panel, 
apart from the animation and the solids you used. So for example, the adjustment layers, and then you just save it as a new file. Then whenever you need it, you just right click and import the file. And that way you get a ready animation that is fully customizable. And you should just create more of these because they are saving a ton of time. I'm going to be probably covering more in the future tutorials. And if you don't want to waste time on creating this, you can always go with my ready to use assets. So I can go to, let's say maps, let's take the Raider. And these are ready to use animations, fully customizable. If you go in here, you can change the color, you can change everything. And there's plenty of them. Let me just show you what I got there. Let's say the time watch. This is very convenient to have something like that because for example, me, I always talk about saving time. So this is a perfect animation for this. And like I said, it's fully customizable. You just go in here, you click on the big hand and you change the speed. Check it out. How slow it goes see and then you can always go back in time so i got plenty of different functionalities here so if i go to hook we just drop it here check it out you can always go to that layer and you can change the fragment so if i click here i adjust which moment is selected So this is extremely cool and saving a bunch of time. That will be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Check out the video on the screen and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.